twenty. Heroic deeds. The black hearts ran down to the courtyard and out of the keep. The grounds of the fort were strewn with the dead and dying, men and ratmen laying long heaps of bodies, that defined where the lines of battle had been, highest where the fighting had been the fiercest. To the left of the gate was the place Halmer had called to the keep to open the portcullis. Reiner peered at the bodies there. Things were moving among them, but he didn't wish to believe they were rats. They were the size of pit dogs and as muscular. They scurried over the bodies, gnawing and clawing at them. And they didn't just prey on the dead. Reiner saw a wounded man try to push away a rat with feeble strength. The rat sat on his chest and chewed through his throat. "It's horrible," muttered Franca. "Horrible." Be gone, beasts!" cried Corel, stamping his feet and waving his sword. The rats looked up, but failed to run at his advance. Their eyes glowed red in the light from the keep's gate. Reiner grunted and waved the others ahead. "We get Mathias, but no more. There are too many. We'll tell someone once we're back inside." As they started moving through the bodies, Reiner saw Jurgen crossing towards them. He saluted as he approached. "Romner," Reiner said, nodding. "How went the battle for the walls?" "Well," Reiner snorted. "A veritable fountain of words, aren't you, Romner?" Jurgen nodded, then fell in with the others. Reiner sighed. The man was unreachable. After a moment, Reiner saw the body of Mathias's horse. They picked their way to it. Keeping wary eyes and weapons on the huge rats, Mathias lay behind it, almost lost in shadow, but for the bright, straight line of his sword. Two huge rats hunched over him, one chewing on a leg, the other on an arm. "Shoo!" called Corel. "Go away, you horrible things!" "Where, laddie?" said Reiner. He hurried after him, stepping on the bodies as he went. One squealed and squirmed. Reiner stopped and turned. The squeal had not been human. A plump rat man in long robes knelt among the bodies, a scalpel in its hands, a hand gunner neatly laid open before it. It blinked up at Reiner through thick spectacles. Reiner frowned. He knew this creature. The surgeon, cried Franca. She started forward, her teeth bared. I want his spleen," the rat man snarled in anger and started to crab backwards. Franca lunged at it, slashing with dagger and short sword. The rat scrambled away with surprising speed, chittering in its own tongue and pointing at the black hearts. The giant rats looked up like dogs hearing their master's voice, then leapt to the attack. Reiner sprang back, slashing at three rats that snapped at his legs. The others were similarly infested. "Ahoy, the keep!" Reiner cried. "Help us!" No one responded. He cursed. "Back to the fort!" But it was difficult to disengage. Hal's pinned the rat to the ground, but another had him by the boot. Pavel flung one over his shoulder on the point of his spear. A second jumped on his back. Franca kicked one back and stabbed another. As she tried to reach the surgeon, Gert hacked one with his axe and stomped another flat. Two more leapt at his chest. Jurgen decapitated one and cut another in two. He stepped toward Pavel to help him with his. Karel cut at two, backing away from their claws and teeth. A huge shadow loomed out of the darkness behind him, and he didn't see it. Lad. Called Reiner, behind you. Karel turned and ducked a great chisel-shaped claw. The monster slashed at him again. The thing was the size of an ogre, rippling with fur-covered muscles. Karel dodged back, then lunged at it, slashing it across the arm. It roared and attacked again. Reiner rushed in with Franca and Jurgen, but before they could reach the beast, the surgeon skittered ahead of them. 
Such brave! It cried. Such courage! Take! Take! It gibbered an order at the rat ogre, and the thing curled its fist and clubbed Karel to the ground instead of gutting him. The boy's sword clattered to the flagstones. Reiner tripped on a pile of bodies, trying to reach the monster. He fell. Jurgen leapt the pile and swung at the beast, gashing its shoulder. It backhanded him, knocking him into Pavel and Franka. Before they could regain their feet, the rat ogre caught up Karel's limp form with one claw while the surgeon clambered up on its shoulders. The rat man wrapped his monstrous mount on the head with his bony knuckles and pointed to the north wall, squeaking all the while. The beast vaulted over a dead horse and disappeared into the shadows. Karel tucked under one arm. The giant rats ran behind it in a bounding carpet. Reiner clenched his fists. Curse the boy! The battle's won! The day's saved! Why does he have to go and get himself taken now? He looked around at the black hearts. They were waiting, expectant. He sighed. All right, come on. They ran for the north gate, Reiner's wounded leg screaming with each step, as stiff as a tree branch. The pass was strewn with dead ratmen. Their panic had apparently not abated, for they had all been cut down from behind. Reiner and the black hearts jogged through it, peering ahead anxiously into the darkness. Only occasionally did the clouds part to allow them to see their quarry bounding before them. They were gaining on the rat monster, but slowly. Reiner's breath was like knives in his throat. He couldn't remember when he had run more in one night. They veered into the branching ravine that led to the mine. The dead rats were thicker here, where the narrowing walls had slowed their retreat, and the black hearts stumbled over bodies and were forced to weave around abandoned flame guns and other strange equipment. Soon they saw the outer walls of the mine before them, and a moment later the weird silhouette of the ogre-mounted surgeon lurching through the gate, followed by its boiling shadow of rats. Reiner expected to hear echoes of battle from within the compound and see the light of torches, but it was silent and empty. As they ran in, they saw at last evidence that the ratmen and the soldiers had come this way. A crowd of armored horses milled about in front of the mine entrance, waiting for their riders to return. The soldiers have chased the rats to their hole, thought Reiner. He prayed the vermin the explosion had trapped hadn't dug themselves out. There, said Howes, pointing. In the center of the compound, the rat ogre was shambling warily on, its burdens at last slowing it down. Franca stopped and knocked an arrow, then pulled her bowstring back to her ear. She let fly. The rat surgeon squeaked and toppled off his mounts, shoulders, arms flailing. The rat ogre stopped and turned. The black hearts sprinted forward, while Gerd and Franca stayed back and fired at the beast. Jurgen shot out ahead, holding his sword to his side. The rat ogre saw them coming, and dropped Karel to step over the surgeon, roaring defiance. The giant rats surrounded it, hissing and snarling. Jurgen leapt over them, sword high. The rat ogre raised an arm instinctively, a clawed arm spun away, severed cleanly by Jurgen's flashing blade. The beast bellowed in pain and knocked Jurgen sideways. The swordmaster landed shoulder first among the rats and rolled. They snapped and clawed at him. Reiner kicked left and right at the rats and aimed a thrust at the monster. His blade slid off its ribs, opening a crimson gash in its dark fur. It clubbed him aside with its bloody stump. Reiner staggered, his vision blurring from the impact, his bad leg buckling. Pavel and Hals tried to reach the rat ogre as well, but found themselves fending off the rats instead. The monster surged forward, swinging at Pavel. Franka and Gerd peppered it with arrows and bolts, but it still kept coming. Reiner limped forward again, but as he waded into the rats, chopping in all directions, 
Karel stood up behind the rat ogre, weaving and drawing his dagger. Get away, laddie! Reiner shouted. But the boy leapt on the beast's back, stabbing it in the neck. It howled and clawed behind it in agony, catching Karel by the arm. Reiner lunged in at its exposed side and plunged his sword into its guts. It roared and smashed Karel down on top of him, flattening him to the cobbles. The boy's elbow cracked him in the cheekbone. Reiner gasped, trying to suck air into his collapsed lungs. Karel's weight lifted off again and he rolled away, slashing blindly to keep the rats away. He looked up. The rat ogre towered above him, its hideous face contorted in a snarl. It had Karel by the leg now and was swinging him around like a club. Pavel and Hals were flying back, knocked off their feet. Franka and Gert were holding fire, afraid to hit Karel. Reiner tried to rise, tried to get his sword in front of him. The rat ogre glared down at him and raised Karel over its head. Reiner threw himself aside. The beast brought the boy down like an axe. Karel smashed onto the cobbles with a sick smack Reiner fell through his hands. Pavel and Hals staggered up, shaking off the rats and wading towards the beast. Franka and Gert fired. Reiner rolled to dislodge a rat and saw the rat ogre raising its human weapon again. Reiner flailed, but he couldn't get out of the way. He was covered in rats. One bit his arm, another his side, another his foot. He felt none of it. His whole world was the rat ogre. Motion flickered in the corner of his eye. Jurgen, The swordsman ran up the monster's back, blade high. He chopped down like an executioner. The ugly head split in two, gushing blood, Jurgen's steel lodging between its two front teeth. The beast fell like a tree, face first, right beside Reiner. Karel dropped flat to his right. Jurgen sprang off the monster and laid into the rats around Reiner. Reiner killed the one on his chest and flung it at two more. He rolled to his knees, slashing in a circle, then staggered to his feet and joined Pavel and Hals, who stabbed and kicked and chopped at the vermin in a frenzy. Franka and Gert shot arrows and bolts into them as fast as they could. After a red blind moment, Reiner stopped and looked around, breathing heavily. The others were doing the same. They had run out of targets. All dead? Reiner asked. Aye, said Hals. There's one still moving, said Gert. The black hearts turned. The rat surgeon was writhing away in agony, Franka's arrow still lodged in its back. He had lost his spectacles. Franka approached him, sword out, her face blank and hard. The surgeon squinted at her, trying to back away. Mercy, mercy, please! Franka sneered. This is mercy, torturer! She chopped at his neck. The first cut failed to decapitate him, and he shrieked as she hacked at him a second time and cut his head off. The headless corpse flopped and spasmed. Franca collapsed to her knees. Hals nodded. Well struck, lass. There was a moan behind them. They spun around, swords at the ready. It was Corel. The boy's hands were moving weakly, but he was not long for the world. Reiner knelt stiffly at his side. The others gathered around. Franka retched and sobbed. Karel's chest was an odd shape. A red rib jutted up through his jerkin. He had a gash in his scalp. Reiner could see his skull through. It was cracked. The boy lay in a wake of his own blood. Lad, are you... Reiner swallowed. Are you still with us? Ro, Ro. Karel was trying to beckon to Reiner, but he hadn't much control over his hands. His breath whistled through his teeth in short gasps. Reiner leaned close. What is it, lad? Rowena. 
Rowena! Carell clutched Reiner's arm. His grip was painfully strong. Tell her I died thinking of her. Reiner nodded. Certainly, I will. The poor fool, he thought. The girl had likely forgotten him as soon as he left her sight. But... Carell pulled him closer. But invent a better death. He grinned up at Reiner, though his eyes gazed past him. You're good at that, I? Reiner smiled sadly. Aye, laddie, that I am. Carell relaxed his grip and sank back. Thank you. You aren't what Manfred said. His eyes closed. Poor foolish boy, said Hals. Pavel made a sign of the hammer. Franca murmured a prayer to Myrmidia. He had no business being mixed up in all of this, said Gert. Reiner snorted. None of us did. A noise brought their heads up. They looked around. The sound came from outside a compound. The slow hoof steps of a single horse, echoing hollowly off the walls of the ravine. As they watched, it wandered through the gate, unguided by its rider, who was revealed slowly as it moved out of the shadow of the wall. The knight hung sideways from the saddle at an unnatural angle. A broken lance dropped from his mailed hand, blue and white pennons smeared with blood and dirt. His eyes stared vacantly beyond them. Sigmar, hissed Pavel, it's Gutzman. They all stood and turned to face the dead general, but no one seemed eager to approach him. They were transfixed. A chill ran up Reiner's spine as Mansleeb cut through the clouds and haloed the dead rider. Where had he come from? Had he got lost in the army's pursuit of the Ratmen? Had he followed the Blackhearts? The horse stopped in the center of the compound, its head low, as noises began to come from the mine, the thud of boots, the creak and jingle of armor and sword, and above it all, loud laughter and exuberant banter the voices of a victorious army returning from battle. Reiner stole a look behind him. Lancers, swordsmen and pikemen were swaggering out of the mine, boasting to each other of their exploits. Others came limping or carrying fallen comrades, but even these seemed to be in an ebullient mood. The enemy was vanquished, the empire, or their little corner of it, was saved. Their merry chatter faltered, and fell silent, however, as one by one they noticed the lone knight sagging gracelessly from his saddle in the moon glow. They came forward in small groups to stand with the black hearts, until at last the entire garrison, or what was left of it, stood in a half-circle looking at their leader, who in life had nearly led them to folly, but in death had led them to victory. They watched thus for many minutes, no one wanting to end the unearthly eeriness of the moment. But then, with a loud snap, one of Gutzman's ropes broke, and he crashed to the ground. The garrison gasped and cried out. Then Captain Halmer, who had been standing with his men, stepped forward. Carry him back to the fort. He raised his hand. May Sigmar bless our fallen general. The garrison raised their voices in unison. Hail, Gutzman! Praise Sigmar! Long live the Empire! The crowd of soldiers began to break up as some of Halmer's lancers went forward and started making a makeshift stretcher of their lances. Riders found their horses, pikemen and swordsmen formed up in their shattered companies. Halmer saw the black hearts and saluted. He crossed to Reiner and clasped his hand, then leaned in. The garrison and the whole of the empire owe you. I owe you. Unfortunately, for the morale of the men, I think it might be best if they were allowed to continue to believe that Gutzman died here and now, after the battle was won, rather than before it began. 
Reiner exchanged the wry looks with his comrades. That's all right, Captain, he said. We're used to it. Heroic deeds play best when it's heroes that perform them. Nobody wants to hear a ballad about the black hearts that propped the would-be deserter on his horse and sent him off to save the day. Halmer scowled at that. Good. Then you would do well to keep it to yourself. He turned on his heel and began calling the troops to order. Franca rolled her eyes. The soul of diplomacy as always. Reiner shrugged and grinned. The truth is never diplomatic. The sun rose on a cold, bright morning as General Gutzmann led his army for the last time. Four knights carried him back to the fort on crossed lances as their comrades marched silently behind them, heads uncovered, and swords, lances, and pikes held at the shoulder. The ceremonial mood was marred, however, when it was discovered that another army occupied the fort. A thousand fresh Auschweg knights, spearmen, swordsmen, and crossbowmen held the great south wall and the keep. An Auschweg captain at the head of a company of swordsmen held up a hand as the column entered. Baron Kaspar, Tsinchka Koloman's regards, he said. And would you be so kind as to ask your captains to meet him in the great hall? Halmer stiffened. A foreigner giving orders in an empire fort? It's a request only, said the Auschweger, bowing. Very well, Halmer said. He dispatched a corporal to summon the other captains. Reiner didn't like the look of things. He motioned his comrades off to one side. I think, lads, that it is time for us to go. Collect your things, and meet me back here as soon as you can. We'll want to be away before... Hetzal. Reiner cringed. He turned and saluted. Captain? Halmer dismounted and stepped close to him. I may have need of your guile just now. You will attend me as my assistant. Come. Reiner sighed. Right. He looked back at the Blackhearts as Halmer led him towards the keep. Get ready, he mouthed. Baron Kaspar waited for the garrison's captains on the steps of the great hall. He looked every inch the dashing hero, dressed in armor of silvered plate, with a cloak and surcoat of blazing white over it. Welcome, gentlemen, he said. Pray come in. He turned and led them into the great hall, which was still in great disarray, after being used to house pike and sword companies the night before. Caspar pushed through the clutter of benches and tables, and stepped up onto the raised dais, extending a gracious hand. Take your seats, gentlemen. He circled the table and dropped into Gutzman's chair. The captains froze where they were. My lord, said Halmer, that is the general's chair. Caspar shrugged. I am a general, yes? Yes, but not... The hall's great double doors boomed close behind them. Reiner looked around with the others. Armed men filed through the side door and surrounded them. What is the meaning of this? asked Captain Wortmunder. Caspar smiled. It means I now have the right to sit in this chair. Wortmunder stepped forward. But you are the general's friend. He was helping you. And the general is dead now. Caspar cut him off. He sighed. I was becoming tired anyway, of all the delays, all the shilly-shallying, of having to beg for Goodsman's gold and make extravagant promises to get it. Now I no longer have need of such compromises. Now I no longer have to buy the golden eggs, since, as of this moment, I own the goose that lays them. He laughed. This is the best of both worlds. With a mine and a fort in my possession, my brother will not long stand against me. I will rule Auschweg, and soon all the princi and soon all the principalities. You swine! cried the knight captain. 
You break the treaty. The Empire will destroy you, said Wortmunder. You won't get away with this, said Halmer. The Empire will never know, said Kaspar, for no one will leave here. Besides, as long as I continue to send Altdorf a few meager shipments of gold, they won't bother to ask who sends it to them. He smiled. And if they do some day learn who holds the pass, it will be too late, for I will have built my own empire by then. You madman, cried Wortmunder. You are a mere tick on the backside of the empire. You... Caspar shot to his feet. I will not be insulted in my own keep, he shouted. Speak to me that way again, and you will be shot. He sat back down, composed again. Now, you will be held hostage against the good behavior of your men until I decide how to dispose of them. Reiner watched the captains, seething with impotent rage, as Caspar outlined his commands and conditions. Their hands clenched, and their eyes bulged with fury. They were too angry to think, too outraged by this grievous insult to the Empire to examine the situation. At any moment, one of them might explode and say something that would get them all killed. Reiner didn't wish to die. Something had to be done. He leaned in and whispered in Halmer's ear. After a moment, the lance captain nodded. My lord, he said, stepping forward, I regret to inform you that you are too late. Altdorf will be sending a force to reinforce this garrison within a month. What do you say? asked Kaspar, sitting up. What's that? A messenger was dispatched before we left the mine, my lord, replied Halmer, informing Karl Franz of our battle with the Ratman and requesting reinforcements. There will be a full garrison on its way as soon as he reaches Altdorf, and though you may well hold the fort against that force, you won't hold it against the force that will come after that. The Empire is relentless against its enemies, as you know. It will not stop until you have been wiped from the face of the earth. Kaspar turned red. He turned to one of his captains. Send a squad to hunt down this messenger. I will kill him before he leaves the mountains. You might, my lord, said Halmer levelly, and you might not. He has quite a lead. He coughed. I have another suggestion that you might find palatable. Caspar glared at him. You think to make terms with me? You are my prisoners. It is only a suggestion, my lord. You may do with it as you will. Speak! snapped Caspar. You might, my lord, allow a second messenger to be sent after the first, informing Altdorf that you hold the fort for them, that after Commander Shader's betrayal of General Gutzman to the Ratman and the subsequent loss of the fort, you rode in and saved the day. Vortmunder turned on Halmer, eyes wild. What horrible lie is this? We needed no help. We defeated the Ratman. We held the fort. But we don't now, Captain, said Halmer. Would you rather lose the fort to assuage your pride, or serve the Empire with your humility? He turned back to Kaspar. My apologies, my lord. As I was saying, you could send a message to Altdorf that you have saved us, and that you hold the fort for Karl Franz's reinforcements, thereby keeping the Empire's southern border safe. Kaspar sneered. And why should I do that? Why should I kiss Karl Franz's spotty behind? The captains bridled at that, but Halmer only smiled. Because, my lord, just as the Empire's vengeance is relentless, so is its benevolence limitless. In return for your help in the matter, the gracious Empire would support you against your brother and very likely back you in your ambitions against the other princes in the region. Altdorf has for centuries longed for more stability on its southern border. 
Caspar sat back in his seat, brow furrowed. Reiner could see his suspicious nature fighting with his greed and ambition. He smiled. He knew which of those combatants always won out with a man like Caspar. He exchanged a look with Halmer and nodded. The captain had done a masterful job. He hadn't made any demands or any threats. He had laid it out, as Reiner whispered it to him. A reasonable plan, presented by a reasonable man. After a long moment, Caspar nodded. Very well, send your messenger. But you will be held as hostages in Auschwitz. If Altdorf betrays me, you will all die. You understand me? Halmer and the others nodded, their heads held high. They knew that, in reality, the Empire would come for Kaspar's head, and Kaspar would kill them for betraying him. But they were knights of the Empire. They were ready to make this sacrifice. Reiner, on the other hand, was not. Uh, Captain, he said to Halmer, I would be honored to be allowed to convey this message to Altdorf. 